If you've got hip or knee arthritis and you know you need to get started with some exercises but you're not sure exactly which exercise to get started with, these are the ones for you. So I'm Elizabeth, I'm a physiotherapist and these are the ones I generally start my clients on. Of course everyone is individual but these are just a great uh, set of exercises for most people just to build some strength and confidence. They're really simple and easy to do and you can do them at home, no equipment required. So let's get into it. Our first exercise is standing hip abduction and we'll aim to do 10 to 20 of these. So standing, holding your bench, taking your leg out to the side and then bringing it back in. Watching yourself, that toe isn't pointing out to the side. You want to keep the toes pointing straight forwards and also make sure you're not tipping the body away. So think of lifting up through that supporting leg, being really straight and tall through the spine. So taking that leg out to the side, leaving from the heel and coming back in. And again, so really checking that those toes don't point out to the side and thinking of being really tall and strong up through that supporting leg, keeping the body really straight and square. Got a couple more here, taking it out and in and one more, taking it out and bring it back in. All right, other side. So leading from the heel and bring it back in, checking that you're being really strong up through that supporting leg, being really tall through the body and coming back in and leading it from the heel. So heel goes out and then heel comes in. Toes are pointing straight forwards. So you may find this is a lot, a lot harder on one side than the other and that's very common. If you've got uh, arthritis on one side, um, then you're likely to be weaker on that side and that's okay. We're just working to build that strength and even it out. So taking that leg out, leading from the heel, bringing it back in and again, and back in good all right so our next one is standing hip extension so you can stay holding the bench the way you are but i'm going to turn around so you can get a good side view so we're taking that leg out behind squeezing from the buttock and bringing it back in so just watch that you're not bending through the knee that's really common so and also make sure you're not tipping forwards through the body if your back is sore you can tip through forwards but otherwise think of really lifting up through that front of the body so you're really squeezing through that buttock to take that leg behind you and bring it back in so it's all about the buttock so just checking in with yourself if you're feeling too much hamstring that you're not bending through the knee so being really tall through that supporting leg like we we're talking about before and really zipping up through the body. So thinking like you've got a string coming up through your spine that's keeping you nice and tall. So now we'll do the other side and I'll turn around so you can get that back view. So just watching that your leg isn't going out to the side as well. We want to keep it straight behind us um, and you might just want to check yourself because um, it might naturally, it f feels like it's going straight back when it's actually not. So if this is feeling a lot harder on one side, that's okay. Um, and normally it's the, um, say, your, if you've got right knee arthritis, you might find this side harder even though you're lifting your left leg, but it's because your right leg is supporting you. So um, we're just working at building that strength through the supporting leg as well as the leg that's going out. So you're getting double um, bang for your buck. So next is a calf raise. So strengthening through our calf muscles. So rising up onto tippy toes and then lowering down slowly with control. Make sure you are holding onto the bench for support here. This is not a balance exercise. We're working on your strength through the calf. So lifting up through the heels and coming back down. So just watch that you are putting your weight through your big toes. We don't want the ankles rolling out like this. That's not good for your ankles and um, can make you more prone to rolling your ankles, uh, like spraining them. So yeah, really pushing through the big toes. So this calf muscle crosses your knee at the back. So it gives you a lot of good support for the knee at the back. And that's what these exercises are doing. They're supporting the um, knee all and the hip from front side side and back. So rising up on tippy toes, pushing through the big toe, lowering down slowly with control. And we always want to stretch out after we do this because tight, tight calves don't feel good and they can lead to pain. Now just watch that your toes aren't pointing out to the side. That's a way of cheating and make sure your knee isn't bent. So we want straight back knee and then toes pointing forwards and then you lean forwards into that front leg, keeping that back heel down to feel the stretch and you should feel it along the back of that back calf. So you can hold this anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds and then swapping on to the other side.
So just check that your toes are pointing straight forwards. If you are very tight through your ankle, your body will want to cheat and have that toe pointing out to the side and lunging forwards, feeling that stretch really drive through the back heel to get that full stretch. Okay, so the next one is seated knee extensions. So this one is better to do uh, with your feet flat on the ground and your back against the chair, but I'm just doing it um, on this chair to be a bit more aesthetically interesting for you. So we're taking our leg out, we're tightening through that thigh muscle and then bringing it back down after a hold so yeah when you take that leg out really try and make it as straight as possible and you're pulling your kneecap up and tightening through that thigh to get that full work through that thigh muscle so this is strengthening you through your front of the knee yet really making sure you're tight through the front of the thigh and slowly down so we're doing about a five second hold at the moment um, but you can build up to doing 10 second holds and with time, you might want to add in some leg weights or a band to resist you. So holding it up and then bring it down slowly with control. Taking it out and holding tight through that thigh. Make sure you are keeping it tight and straight and it's not starting to get a bit saggy or bent. Tightening up straightening keeping it really straight and strong if you're getting too much of a stretch through your hamstrings you can point your toes but if not it's good to have that foot flexed and coming back down good and if you're getting any back pain with this just check that your back is supported if you're short you can have a cushion behind you so you can reach the back of the chair other leg so tightening up through that thigh really pulling up through that kneecap and then lowering it down and again, so we're taking it out, we're holding five, four, three, two, one, and then lowering it down. Good, keep going, holding, really tightening through that thigh, being really tight. So, and again, so this is a really important exercise because it's strengthening through your quad muscles and you need them for walking, going upstairs, that sort of thing. And because it's non-weight bearing, it's generally a pretty comfortable exercise. So you can do this one when you're watching TV, when you're sitting, and it's a good one to do if you've just been sitting for a while and your knees are stiff when you get up. It just gets the blood flow and lubrication happening. All right, a couple more here, tightening through that thigh holding and then bringing it back down and again really keep that really strong and tight through the thigh so you're actively pulling that thigh muscle up to feel the work holding two three four five and lower down slowly with control and again holding it up two three four five and coming back down our last exercise is sit to stand, which is like a modified squat using a chair. So we cross our arms over our chest, we stand up, and then we lower down slowly with control. Of course, if you need your arms for support, you can push through those. That's perfectly fine. But with time, you'd aim to be able to do it without the arms. So when we're coming up, we make sure we straighten up all the way, squeezing through the buttocks. And when we go down, it's really slow and controlled. So if you imagine like you're sitting onto a carton of eggs and you're not wanting to squash them and make scrambled eggs, that's what you're aiming for. So pushing up and then coming down slowly with control. Keep your weight back through the heels um, and stick that bottom out when you're going down. That should keep some of the weight out of the knees and uh, it should make it more comfortable for you. So standing up, tightening, straightening through the buttocks and then lowering down slowly with control. Last one coming up and lowering down slowly with control. All right, well done. So you've just made it through these five foundational exercises for um, hip and knee arthritis. If you've got any questions, put them below.